This video is a viewer interactive social experiment being conducted on how the phrase guilty in the court of public opinion affects the jury verdicts of possible innocent defendants awaiting trial in America. Do our media outlets inadvertently brainwash our potential jurors of a defendant's guilt months before a trial even begins? Coast to coast and for centuries our society continuously gets bits and pieces of a crime scene directly from media outlets that either law enforcement agencies or a prosecutor divulges. And as our society learns of the crime committed, two things simultaneously happen at the expense of the livelihood of the accused defendant. One, the prosecutor is able to advance his or her political career by bragging in the media how they caught a specific type of criminal prior to the defendant's day in court. And two, these media outlets covering these stories make their agencies millions of dollars. As Americans, we do have our First Amendment rights to print and publish stories, but the defendant awaiting trial also has their civil rights. So, should prosecutors be able to use the media to advance their careers and destroy a defendant's potential good name prior to their day in court? And should media outlets be able to exploit the defendant's alleged guilt for monetary gain. We see local courts issue gag orders in the light of certain circumstances. But should federal courts ban media outlets from releasing certain criteria related to a homicide as notably attained and collected from law enforcement? Exactly how harmful is it to a defendant to distribute information about potential trial evidence to the public as a whole when 12 of these persons are going to become potential jurors, we are supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But in America, we are guilty until proven innocent. We often too many times watch these horror stories of innocent people spending years in prison. And when exonerated, they sue for millions because their civil rights were violated. When is our society going to start respecting the civil rights of those viewed guilty in the court of public opinion? And this is where our social media experiment begins. What if you were chosen to be a juror in Brian Koberger's trial? As America tunes in to the unfolding Koberger saga, I'm going to ask your thoughts on Brian Koberger's involvement. In an ever-growing interactive society, Please type your answer choice in the comments section. Follow the rules. Choose one of the phrases in the question asked. In the comments section, type out your answers in the form of the phrase that best fits your answer. Submit all of your answers in one comment as you listen. This is what an example of your submitted answers should look like. If you would like to elaborate on your thoughts, reply to your submitted answers comment with your elaboration of how and why. Let's begin with the questions. Brian Koberger is guilty or innocent? I need more info on the case or the media has provided ample evidence. Prosecution has the right knife or murder weapon will never be found. DNA will convict Koberger or DNA will acquit Koberger? Moscow Police Department was competent or incompetent in finding a suspect. If no other DNA links to Koberger in this case, then I am inclined in my belief that the knife sheath is cross-contaminated or is not cross-contaminated with the Koberger family trash. If law enforcement uses a secondary lab's public database to link a family member of the suspect to trial evidence, these labs should have or should not have the same strict guidelines as a crime lab. Koberger acted alone or Koberger had an accomplice. Koberger was framed or not framed. Moscow Police Department has the right guy in custody or I feel other suspects should be further investigated. Koberger stalked or did not stalk one or more of the four students. Koberger is still using or is not using drugs. Koberger's Reddit questionnaire slash experiment for criminals to speak about their past crimes committed could be utilized as a great tool or a poor tool for law enforcement to record psychological patterns of past offenders. I am for the death penalty or I am not for the death penalty. I have watched or have not watched 
Two or more mainstream media outlets reveal information about this case. My answers are determined strongly by evidence shared from these mainstream media outlets, or my answers are determined by my own independent beliefs with a more extensive exploration of this case. I subscribe or do not subscribe to a paid podcast or crime syndication. I regularly follow or do not follow a nationally known crime syndication host or hostess and support and share their views. I have monetized or have not monetized my own YouTube videos on Brian Koberger. Thank you for taking the time to answer and review these questions. I'll follow up in the near future with some results. Thanks guys. See y'all next time.